Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about working alone as a junior and if it's a good idea. So let's get into it. So the question in question was a little bit of a story and the question was basically, Frederick, I have an opportunity to take a mobile application development gig as the only developer and as a junior developer it would be my first job but I'm concerned that this is going to be a problem for me because working alone might, it might be a challenge for me to work completely alone. What should I do? And the short answer is you should consider your options and if this is currently your most viable option, you should go for it. Let me explain. So none other than Mr. Patrick Taylor himself asked this. Yes, Mr. First. And he, he touches on something that I have touched on myself as well. I've explained to you guys before that one of the most important things that you can do for your personal career or your professional career is to work as part of a team. Now, the reason for that is very simple because when you have your first job, it's very similar to, you know, being a doctor or an architect or something like that. You may know the theory behind how to do all these things, but you need practice. And practice is usually best done with the guidance of more experienced people. That's why you have trainers and you have like a master in martial arts. Someone with more experience that can direct you and help your learning process as much as possible. Now, this is, as I said, the most important thing. Nothing else is more important than being able to do this because it will, it makes and a world of difference. I'm saying that if it, 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 it can be the difference between like, if you're going to progress to a senior level experience within just a few years or if you're going to stay a junior for most of your career. It's, that's mu how much of a difference it actually makes. Learning is always a very useful thing. But it's also a matter of pragmatism. Now, if you, if you're in a situation as Patrick here, or a similar situation at least, you have to remember something, and that is that if you don't have any other option, what are you going to do? Like, because there's something that is worse than working alone as a junior developer, and that is to not have a job. And that is to not be in a professional environment and work in a professional environment. That's even worse because now you're not getting any real professional work experience. You see, even if you take a job that is kind of, sh I'm not saying this. I'm not saying that this job is shitty. I'm just saying that in general, even if you if you felt that there was a job that was kind of shitty, it's still a job. It's still adding value to your knowledge. It's still adding value to your CV, and that's a key thing here. You see. Some of you may be so fortunate that you just kind of just slide through being self-taught or you slide through being uh, going to college or something like that. And then they just pour the jobs on you the first day. I mean, it, 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 this can happen. And then you just go directly into a, either a big corporation or a very nice startup or something like that. And you have the good fortune of just getting peers, peers immediately and you just just kind of flow through things. But some people struggle to get into the industry, and not because they're not good programmers, but because of the environment that they find themselves in, their region. There might be a different way of thinking culture-wise, you know I've said before, and this is still true. There are quite a lot of companies out there who will not even consider a junior developer who has no degree. And that doesn't mean that that junior is bad, it just means that they, for reasons, feel that, oh no, we're just gonna bet on college grads. <laughs> And there's not much you can do about that. And if you are in that sort of situation, then you, you kind of have to think about, maybe I need to take this as a multi-step type of thing. I need to maybe do this in, in several steps. So maybe the best thing for me is to take a, like a low-end coding job where I kind of have to work alone or work on some small project just to get something on my CV. Because if I get that on my CV, and I do a really good job, well then that's gonna weigh 
it's going to weigh in on the decision of the next job. In other words, the manager is going to interview you for the job there after that. Well, then that job might be a job where you can get into a really nice company and you can get a team and you can get some peers and stuff like that. And maybe that's the way to go, right? If you don't have that option on day one when you're trying to become a programmer, then maybe you need to work up until you get to that situation. It's very similar to why you should why it's why you can't just think that you're going to get a job at a high-end firm after three weeks of practicing. You, you need to bridge a knowledge gap so that the people in that company want to invest in you. And adding something to your CV is more valuable than self being self like you just learning by yourself. Professional work is always more useful to you than how many courses you have taken or how many side projects you have. Because professional work means that you have been doing the thing somewhere else that you're now going to do in this company. So what I want you to take away from this is the thing that I basically wrote back to to Mr. Taylor. And that was that you should consider whether or not you don't, if you don't have any other option, I think that you should try this out for yourself. Because it's always better to start, you need to accumulate experience because the experience is the easiest way for you to get market value. And the market value is the thing that's going to give you the option of picking where you want to work or negotiating salaries, etc, etc. And it might be that this is a really nice place of work to be. You might really enjoy it, might be perfect for you. You should just be aware of that you may be limited in such a workspace, in such a work environment. Like That's all you need to be aware of. It's not like you're miss you're missing out on potential but you let's be honest here guys you can go to a company that has a team of really horrible people and you might be worse off than if you were working alone there's no guarantee that just because you have a team that you're just going to become much better it's just more likely that that's going to happen so if this is the best option then always go with always go with the best option and then Invest, do your best, be aware of that this may not be perfect, but it might lead to something that is even better. And then when you feel good and ready to take the next step, investigate if you can upgrade. And that's how you progress through a career. You start, some of us, some people start at different levels on the ladder, but everybody does it the same way. You work yourself up until you reach wherever you want to reach. That's pretty much it. Have a great day.